Really? This stuff looked like the old scab or something, yeah. Of course, I was supposed to put this on. As soon as I had attached the pedal, the Speed Cobra 310, did I, well, yeah, technically I, I did put this uh, protector hoop for the drum, bass drum, that is. I, I uh, fixed it, I just never pulled the adhere adhesive. So, all right, it's like, you know, <clears throat> what are we doing with it? We're not splitting atoms, okay? I was just trying to make the most of it. That's, that's not good. What am I screwing with here? I'm gonna bother. Just looks like it's your standard 3M. So, let me trash that. Let's get this on, but we still can. Still have some adhesive. Gonna, I think it makes more sense to put it on the pedal than the hoop. Suppose the other way around. Let's see if we can get it to work that way, though. I tried it once already, as you saw it. Kind of just scrunched up. But it looks like, it looks, now it looks like we uh, got it right here. So, <clears throat> as you see, I, uh, well, I think you can see. Let me try to raise the camera up a little for you. I uh, swapped out the beaters that come standard for the Speed Cover 310. This is the Tama. Tama Speed Cover 310. It's like the bottom line Tama. I've, I've had uh, the higher end version of this one, and I definitely noticed a difference in the, the smoothness. This one feels a little slightly laggy, although I didn't, I got, you know, to be completely truthfully honest, brutally honest, actually, it's been over two years before I even, even touched any type of drummer. Yeah. That, that's honest. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm just getting, I'm getting back into the groove, man. Literally, I'm just doing a lot of warming up. I still feel pretty tense and stiff behind the kit, and just like, even using a pedal is just so weird for me. So I just been, to tell you, I've just been practicing a lot of uh, heel down, practicing a lot of heel down, and um, like just toes, just developing those those muscles, you know, on the side, the front, the calf muscles. So, because you know, you obviously need strong legs to play double bass pedal. Or just, yeah, I was gonna say single bass drum. Not that you don't need strong legs, single, but it's, it's a whole different beast when you're doing you know, single bass rhythms with double kick. So I'm not, anyway, I'm practicing just not even not even a uh, heel up, just heel down, practicing a lot of heel down. And what am I trying to do here? I need to I need to keep those like that for a sec, just so I can. Can I screw this damn thing on? Not yet. I want to make sure we're good. I, I could just just lightly screw it just to where it feels snug. Let's uh. So it came with weights. Not sure why I have my separate bags. The uh, these are they're not the DW hardcore beaters. These are the beaters that actually come in with the DW um, DD. It's a direct drive. It comes with a direct drive. It's a high end DW pedal. I did a review on it. DW. Um, yeah, it's above the nine thousand, which I had before, and I <laughs> great pedal, smooth. But I'm pretty sure I broke it down here at the hinge, at the base hinge plate. And also, I broke it, I think I broke it up the hinge plate, and I broke it here, at the drive shaft, on this side. Yeah, never never on this slave side, because this, is, this is, gets a lot more of the, the torque, the, the impact and force, of course, from your foot, so I didn't, I didn't break it on this side, but I definitely broke the uh, slave side on the DW9000, but the, the new one I like to check, that's what it is, it's the DW Machine Drive. It's a, yeah, and I guess the, uh, the, the product name, or SKU name, would be um, the DW, um, uh, what is it, what did it say, MD? DD, MD, DD. Yeah, anyway, let's get this thing in here. So yeah, that's a really sweet pedal. I was actually, I've, t I've tried so many different pedals. I really have so many, like from, oh my gosh, between Tama and um, Axis and everything in between. Tama, you know, um, Trick, I've tried Trick. Uh, I've had Pearls, Gibraltar's when I first started playing. And, you know, they're good. I even had the, I recently had the, um, I believe it was the Gibraltar Direct Drive. It, um, it was the Road Series. I, it was the lower end one, it was the cheaper one, but I, I liked it better than the, the higher end version of that one, the Gibraltar uh, Road, Road House or Workhorse, or something like that. I like the beaters on it. I just like, I don't know, there was an adjustable tension on the side. It just seems kind of, it wasn't for me. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna bash on it or say anything negative about it. I've never used that one, but I've used the uh, cheaper version of the, 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 the Gibraltar Drive. That was a good pedal. Anyway, I have to go on. I've never tried the Eliminator series. Um, well, what's the Eliminator? Maybe I've, I've had the, the old, maybe the old Pearl Eliminator. My, my, someone I know has was his left handed left foot, so he had a left handed uh, Pearl Eliminator. That's a really smooth pedal. I never tried the newer one of that. It was like the kind of, you know, this, uh, they have this cylindrical beaters under like foam, which is what this time speed code would be thinking with the foam. I just, I don't, I don't like uh, the sound it produces when the felt comes in contact with the bass drum. It sounds a little too boomy and open for me. More like a, you know, uh, I guess it would be a Ludwig acrylic kit. Yeah. Quote, John Bonham, quote. Not really my style, so I, I like the more punchier sound, more thick, punchy attack, especially because these are mahogany drums. This SJ, he, SJC kit is, uh, yeah, it's mahogany. So that said, you know, I want to bring that out. I don't, I don't, I'm not into the birch. I've, I've had birch kits before. I'm not into that. You know, I actually, I, pr I prefer maple over birch even. And, um, yeah, you know, I just, uh, I want the thick punch, real just attack that comes from produced naturally from the wood. So that said, you know, that's just what I'm into. Everybody has their own preference. That's just what I like. I'm trying to remember how that, oh, that's right. You put these things in, and then after you do that, you have to, I have these, like, there was a, these for the DW machine drive, direct drive, MDDD, DW MDDD machine drive, direct drive pedal, or whatever chain. I would, I mean, if I was a person, I'd probably person would try the direct, I wanted a direct drive, but Trick is just, I don't know what's going on with that company. I was looking at the Trick pedals, that's what I was saying, and um, they were just unavailable. They're just out of stock, and on back order, probably still on back order, through anywhere, anywhere, any site I can find, you know, I'm not going to sweet, whatever, just trying to use one, two, three, I think they all exist, but uh, even like, music and arts, music arts, no, I just, I just, I didn't say out of stock, just, Back order, so it's like it's back order, and just constantly just back order. But anyway, my point was, I, you know, I really, I really was into those pedals, the trick, and not the black order. Anything. It was like a cool black and green. I really like the modern look of it. 
Black Mirror. I love the beers. I can really usually tell. I can judge a pedal by the beers usually. But like these beers, these they're badass. So I purchased them. Purchased these from Sweetwater. I use these on the on Jitterbop the drive drive. But I, I don't know. The pedal was like okay. It just started loosening up on me. This actually started loosening up on me. I was getting worried. I thought I broke it. But it apparently just needs to be tightened. Probably the same case with the other one. I just I didn't like the pedal boards on the other one because they're just too circular for my foot. I like pedal boards that are somewhere between both uh, square and circular because you know I mean think about it, your foot. You put all those triangular shapes. You know you know trapezius. Why would you want to put a trapezoid over a circle or you know vice versa? Just doesn't make sense. So I like somewhere between. I like a naturally ergonomic shaped pedal. Makes sense. And the Gibraltar is not it. And you know, like the, the extreme opposite of the axis. It's very kind of just angular. That pedal is very, it's very angular as far as the the, uh, the way it's machined and cut. So I've had the axis a little bit like the micro. Like I said, there's a different pedal for every type of style, every different type of whatever, different type of drummer, really. Let's be honest. So those are. That's it. That's really. That's it. It's really simple to install this. I'm gonna loosen this because I, I feel like maybe it, the beater on uh, the camshaft might a little be too forward for me, and I'm not getting enough of that backlash. I like some backlash. It just feels like there's not enough backlash. I'm really I'm working on my heel toe technique. I've always been kind of a heel up player, somewhere between more like my my, my uh, velvet style has always been. I know you care and all, so that's what I'm telling you. My velvet style has been between swivel and uh, heel up, but I'm currently I'm working on my heel toe technique. Currently, am I metal drummer? No, I don't consider myself a speed drummer. I do not consider myself a speed drummer. I, I'm not a speed metal drummer. I, I'm more of a pop fusion drummer than anything, so I, I don't really have a use for you know playing a lot of heel toe. But then again, there's drummers out there that play heel toe that don't play any metal, and they're incredible. Some of the most incredible heel toe players I've ever seen. Like, their music has no, not a single, uh, you know, taste or hint of, of, of any type of heavy metal riffs in their in their um their music. Anyway, let's uh, let's bring this down. The one important thing about when you apply these patches, I really like to, I used to base it on the height of the, the beer itself, and now I, I really uh, I, I try to keep in mind of the tone of the drum. So that's going to be affected the way you put the patch, of course, the patch, the patch. So I, when I apply the patch, I was very mindful of keeping it centered. Will that affect the uh, beer's way, of course? Because obviously you don't want your your drum patch in the middle center of the drum and your beer's way higher low. It's not even coming contact. So I feel like that's that's a good, reasonable, it's a reasonable, logical, good height right there. So I'm just kind of setting everything up. I'm not tightening it completely. Fixed. Uh, let's get these other ones on, and then I'm going to show you again how simple it is. I'm not sure what's this one. When I, when I receive these in the mail, the packaging was slightly open. This one. May have been stripped. I'm gonna tighten it up real quick just in case. Uh, one of these should be the right key. Yeah, that's it. Usually, I notice that uh, <clears throat> you should always get hex keys with your hardware. Um, drum hardware, not not so much. Some hardware definitely like if you're whatever hi hat stand or drum pedal, bass drum pedal, you always get hex keys. And usually, if you get the stainless steel ones like this, it matches with the stainless steel hex key. Or if it's uh, black it's hex key, it goes with the black hex key. Yeah, black hex key, black hex key. So anyway, we're gonna just loosen it up like that. I know. What is this guy talking about? What is wrong with that? Mikey DJ drummer dude. Just about everything. No, I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. So look, this is able to tilt because I guess if you know some, I guess some drummers I noticed definitely raise their bass drum up with the bass drums first, they extend them so the bass drum's lifted. So that's why I have the ability here to loosen this hex screw and then raise it up as such. Now I just dropped something. Shoot. Oh, I see. The bottom. Where'd it go? Oh man, where'd it go? Was the question? Whoa. Like really? Where'd it go? There it is. Wait, no, it's not. Usually these things end up under the pedal somehow. They just. Oh man, this, this studio is crazy. This studio just like sucks things up magically. I swear. I'll drop a screw and it just vanishes into literally the freaking fifth dimension. This is crazy. What? Oh man, well, I guess it's a good thing I have backup. Where is it? Hold on, guys. I'm gonna have to pick the phone up for a sec. I need the light for this. I have to find this damn thing. It's the only way I'm gonna find it. Did it go into the pedal? Where is it? I'm literally looking for the bottom of that right there. Where'd it go? You guys help me find it? Where is it? There it is. See how tiny that is? No wonder I can find it. It's tiny. Look. See? It's tiny. You dropped it. It's like impossible to find. Oh, that's the worst when it goes under your base Well. If this ever happens, you know what to do. Use your camera lighter. If you have any type of flashlight, you always, you always need a light. Very important to have a light when you go out on a tour, on a road, or just wherever, a gig, you're in your own studio. You need, you need sufficient lighting. Obviously, I'm working in the dark. Thank goodness I have my flash here. I'm using my flash, and that's why I was able to find that for that very reason. So, we got that. We still shooting here? Yeah, we're still shooting. All right. You guys can see everything's going on? Good. I know this video was supposed to be a short one, but oh, we're back. Yeah, okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's put this baby back on. So, I would do it. I personally would do it upside down like that so we don't lose it again, right? Right. Oh, uh, whatever. That's just under my beater. I don't need that or anything. So we, I, uh, when I tighten things up, I like to start vertically with the Hesky, just to kind of get it snug in there. Okay. I'm not telling you, try something out, you know. When once it's snug, then we go back and we bring it. Is this thing the right key? Wait. I'm doing the wrong damn side. You can't tighten that side. You can't tighten that side. You gotta tighten the screw side. Um, let me see a little trick here. Tighten both at once. Half the time. Oh, I gotta watch my posture here. For all you drums out there, it's very important. Always maintain a good posture. Posture? What is this? Posture? Posture, man. Posture. Um, so like right now I'm bending over a lot. I'm leaning over. That's not good. Even when you're doing stuff like this, that's why I took the snare out. I'm get down on the floor with with the pedal as opposed to leaning over the snare drum. When I throw that's so terrible for your back, you don't want that. So just anytime you're doing stuff like this, you're working on your your pedals or anything down low on the floor. Just just make room for yourself and just work down on the floor. I'm not even sitting down. I'm just squatting. But I gotta loosen this again. Just make sure it's level here. Like I said, sorry, this I didn't I didn't mean for this video to be so long, but just don't unscrew it so much where the screw's gonna come out. The nut that is, I want the nut to fall off the first time. That's what it did for me. So make sure the damn beer is straight. Okay. Once it's straight, then you screw it tight. You want it tightly screwed so it's fixed in a nice. Say it with me now. What's the word we're looking for? Do I even know it? This is actually axial. That's axial, right? Yeah, it's not. We want it fixed on a nice axial plane, not a radial plane. That would be y'all's radial. 
know, like a helicopter drone that's y'all, is radial motion, and then the pitch would be axial. Is that what I said? Yes, right. The ball, was, the ball was somewhere in between. So that looks good. Let's get these, um, sorry about the delay there. Let's get these babies in. No, oh, you know, I never noticed that. Huh. They look a little worn. This is brass. I guess I could clean them up a little. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I'm just curious. I just want to check something real quick. Sorry, guys. I'd rather put the unused side. I know this is like OCD stuff, but uh, I'm assuming, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me put the unused side flipped. So you can tell that. See, the used side has, is not necessarily tarnished, but you can see it has wear marks from the, the tar plastic which is dealt in itself from the other side. See, from, from this side. So I'm going to put the fresh side that facing that way. I just like to rotate and keep things cyclical, you know. I, it's, anytime you're using anything really in, in life in general, just I like to uh, rotate and cycle things. This way it wears evenly, you know, especially tires on your vehicle. But yeah, right, right, right. So here we go. Let's, we got those brass uh, weights in. I guess, I, don't know, I guess there's, I forgot there's special name brass bullets. Oh, there's brass bullets. All right, now we got, here's our beater head. And just for the record, this, these faders, the DW and DDD. <laughs> yeah, machine gear. I keep saying that, DDD. Yeah, so they come with felt. They come with a felt version of this also in the same exact style, uh, flat or round. And I've used the round ones already on my practice pad just because I figured, well, I'm never gonna use the round ones again, not really my style. So I use those first and I have backup felt version of this. I guess I'll use them on my practice pad. But these babies, I've been looking forward to using these. I've been wanting these beaters forever. And uh, Tama has a beater that comes with either wood or what I thought was a hard plastic such as this, the Delrin, which was ended up being rubber. And I'm like, I don't really want rubber. That's kind of hard. I don't want rubber here. I'm like, strong. I mean, can you imagine, imagine kissing your woman with rubber lips on? No thanks. All right, let's go. Cool, man. So I'm glad that the, uh, the diameter of these beater shafts actually fit into here because I was kind of worried they wouldn't. I've had issues with the uh, washers for my. Uh, the washers for the SJC drums that go onto the tension rods, yeah, the washer tension rods, the SJC drums, they, they are not standard, they're not universal versions, they fit on the standard tension rods, they're standard for this, but not for the, my quote pod drum. Go figure, right? So that didn't work out. All right, let's get this tightened up here. So these are already loose. Um, as you can see, let's tighten these first. Oh, yeah, I already, that one's tight. Oh, I see. I might have to shoot the nuts. What am I missing here? Oh, look, this thing. I don't really know, I don't understand what this is for. Like, it gave you like a rubber grommet, I guess, just, oh, you know, maybe just to kind of set it so it doesn't slide down the uh, beater shaft inlet there like it just did. And obviously, you always want to make sure that your beaters are completely the same height matched up here and that looks pretty good maybe bring it up a little bit and then go ahead and tighten it and then, you know usually if you have an issue with uh, your beaters actually turning while you're tightening the hex screw you just simply you know hold down the base the pedal board not the base plate the pedal board hold down the pedal with your opposing hand and uh, you know tighten the hex screw such obviously self-explanatory comes and stuff the same for this you want to make sure that they're even you just do this here once again you're holding down the slate pedal with your foot opposing foot non dominant whatever in this case it is my non dominant because i'm right-handed and you're working on a right-handed pedal foot pressure well, it didn't work. I thought I was hoping that because I was putting down pressure on the pedal, it would keep the drum beater nice and um, flush with the bass drum batter head, but it is not. So we just got to go in manually. Once again, I know this video is long. I guess I'll try to speed it up. So that needs to come down just a little bit more. Even them out, even them out. That looks good. Tighten it up. Okay. I'm going to put that pressure on that pedal. So this way, the, the, once again, the drum beaters, I want that drum beater perfectly flush with the bass drum batter head. So everything looks flush to me. And then now it's flush. I think, see how I don't like that though. This beater head is coming in contact, flush flat and even with the bass drum, but not on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly grab my drum key. And you see how this these are off too? See how it's all off? They're not even even. So I gotta, I gotta figure out what's going on with that. I don't know why it's just so everywhere. All right, we'll come back to that. Let me raise you up a little bit so you can, I hope you guys can see what I'm doing here. There you go. Where are we at? Oh yeah, even, even, looks good. And now I need to, I just need to loosen this one. And that's really what it's for, honestly, I would say is, uh, yeah, screw you too. The whole point of these, having a screw on top here to loosen this so you can get the beater, drum beater flush with your bass drum batter head, right? That's all we're doing. And I know, um, I'm sure Axis has a similar feature. I know for sure Trick does. You can do that. You can actually raise the beaters for the Trick. You can actually change that as well. I know that you can um, you can adjust the beater as such and you can also adjust it um, just vertically, up and down. But yeah, this is a definitely a, this is a, what do I say, Axial. Yeah, Axial. Axial is vertical, it's Axial, and radial is horizontal. I know that from the electric motors. All right, so we're loose there. We don't want to make it too loose. No, we're having that sound made too loose. Enough about the bottom. So now we're flush. See how the drum beater's flush with the bass drum batter head? That's what we want. So once you do that, it's nice and flush. Then you go ahead and tighten it up. And we're going to start with the vertical hex key here. Latitude, is it? And then once we get that feeling nice and tight, then we can go in longitude. Radially. Radially. We're tightening the hex key radially. Yes, tightening radially the hex key. Hex screw. Tightening radially the hex screw. I'm sorry. And don't ever tighten it. You don't ever want to tighten things because then what you do, you strip it out, right? So you want to tighten it to where it's like. Bam, that feels nice, you know? And then if it loosens up, if it loosens up on you, can always go back and tighten a little more than you did last time, but I would go in not too tight. Just make it nice and snug, but don't over tighten it, because if it loosens up, you can always go back and make it a little tighter, but you're not stripping out your screws. All right, so now the next problem here is you see that when I press down the bass drum pedals and then release, what happens? Well, there's a lot of lag for sure, and there's a lot of movement in both the bass plates and the whole frame of the pedal itself, because they're very good weight. I like them, I just, I gotta fix it so it doesn't do this, because we're wasting a lot of energy here. So, what can we do to fix that? 
Hmm? Well, I'm gonna say, I guess we can start by, let's go sitting forward for one. Put my legs are falling asleep from that squatting position. Stretch my legs out a little. Oh, my leg might be in the way though. Okay, here, here you go. <clears throat> and um, my spring tension is at maximum for the record. As you can see, you can tell. When I'm adjusting the springs, they, almost all the elevation pedals or just single base pedals in general, they, they usually come factory set. Everything's in the middle, even the springs. Everything's usually set in the middle, <clears throat> okay? So with that said, because everything's set in the middle, damn, that one's loose too. Sorry guys, hold on. I don't know what happened here. We got, a, we got an issue with this one too. See, did I put the, wait, what the hell? Wow, that's all I wanna know is how. How in the heck did that even happen? Do you guys know? Yeah, you know Just keep that rubber grommet there. It's not a lock in any way, shape, or form. It's just a rubber grommet. I guess kind of help you set it. And so, it does, like I said, the, uh, the beater shaft doesn't slide into the inlet. That's all that grommet's for. DW, whoever is an engineer, it's a good idea. It's just, it's a slip. It's a, it's a, it prevents it from slipping. It's a slip ring. Anyway, let's fix this. Okay. All right, now, as you know, our beater on the right is flush. I'm gonna move the left one out of the way so you can see, see that one's flush, it's flush, okay? We have to do the same one with this one, because apparently it was not. So I got some damn fluff on me stuck in my own or something. All right, so we're, we're, we're good, it's flush, you see? So once again, we can use our non-dominant hair opposing hand, we're holding down the slate pedal, and as we're putting, slate, not, not crazy, heavy pressure, we don't to force the damn beater into the, the head, just enough, so that we can tighten this. So I don't see what's going on here, but for some reason the damn thing's not tightening, so let's try to get it from the bottom. I don't know what's going on, guys. But I can tell you, the nut is not catching, so hold on. You gotta go in that way and get it from the bottom, maybe, or? Because if this thing's not catching, I'll send it back to DW. That's not usually like their stuff. I know that DW specifically, especially the iron stuff, is made in the USA. You know, obviously, with anything, it's most, let's, let's be honest, these days, most of the time, stuff is, uh, it's subsidized to third-party manufacturers, uh, whatever that entity, maybe, company, when, where it's located, I'm not going to mention any names, but you get the idea, you get the gist, is where I'm going with that. Uh, yes, you do. So, uh, back to ideas, I think that we're on the right track with this. See, see how the nut, if that nut is, gets too loose, then it won't grab, I'll show you an example. See, so right there, I had it, I had it tight enough where it's grabbing, but if it, if it goes beyond that, for example, if I loosen it so much, then the nut goes underneath the, 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 the I guess it would be the beater, um, what the heck would you call this? I don't even know. The beater, sh neck, shoulder, something like that. It goes beyond that, I won't tighten it. And, you know, unfortunately, this is not a magnetic hex key. If it were, I just, I would just slightly pull up the hex key and it would tighten like that. So we can do it like this too if you want, but I, I wouldn't risk that. You can, if you, as long as you speak, be, sh sh you know, be sure that you're going straight. I don't know, that's what she said. Oh, shoot, it's supposed to be a family channel. Here. Let's try this one more time, shall we? There. All right. Let me see what once again. Slide pressure. Slate pedal. Put the force. Tighten it up vertically with the taxi. Radio motion. Latitude, then go back in. Longitude, actually. And just, we're not over tightening. We want to be very mindful. We are not over tightening this hex screw. It's a tiny little screw with tiny threads into. We're going into plastic. It's nothing more than plastic. It's poly, polyethylene, whatever. Let's call it. So, especially when you're dealing with plastic into. I'm sorry, metal and plastic, no one over tightening it. Okay, you strip it out. That's nice and tight, okay? That's the yellow one, that's how you get it. You can tell, okay, you see how now the beaters are completely flush, the base on battery, okay? See, all right. And then just to be sure, what the hell do I do with that key? Oh, things get lost in the shackle. Just to be sure, and everything, yeah, what will the other be? Did I lose enough? Well, here, I'll make sure. We're just double checking. Here, just to be sure we don't over tighten when you're going on down here. Not that it's not just equally strong, but there we go. Good, that's it, right there. That's enough pressure. That looks good, what do you guys think? See how, I don't know if you can see that. I made it so they're not too far up and not too far down. Don't, you can't, you can't base the height of the, the beaters on the bottom here and how much is protruding from the bottom inlet. You have to base it on the, the top, upper, and I don't know if it's just laying, I think so. These beaters look pretty well even to me. So now that we did that, we know that our spring tension's even here, right? Yes, I'm telling you, it's, trust me, it's, it's, it's both tight. I just loosened that, oops. Wait, what the? Oh yeah. Oh. We just need to fix that. See how much, it's just like, where's the spring action, you know? There is none, we gotta fix that. So we can start by, we already have max tension on these babies. Um, so like now what do we do? You know, now what should we do? We can swap them out, but I think that's pointless. I think what we should do, our, our pedal height looks good, you know? It's not too far up, and it's not too far down. So our pedal height looks good, and this is my professional opinion. It's actually, it's matched perfectly with the speed over 310 hi-hat, so just that, you can judge based off that. And this hi-hat is at max tension, too. The hi-hat, yeah, I have it on max spring tension, so that, that goes to show you we're at a good pedal height there. <coughs> pedal board height is even with the hi-hat height, okay? So next we can adjust our cams, and we're gonna do that by you want to know how? I'll tell you how. These on up here, uh, either side, either opposing side of the drive side, that's how you adjust your pedal height, okay? You want to adjust your cams, and then your beater angle, then you have to loosen these. Um, where? Okay. That's that's for the beater. Okay, where? Here it is. So this is interesting. Hmm, very interesting. Yeah, this is definitely for the pedal board height. I, uh, let, me, let me grab my hex key here, my Allen key set. I believe it's. I believe it's this one. 
And then let's see if there's a, like a thick piece. So I feel like it's right there. It's too big to go. That's what she said. Here we go. Let's try this. Usually common sense stuff, but uh, as far as the diameter, where are we at? I can't really. We need. Oh wow. I'm not gonna use that joke again. Is there even one? Or am I just wasting my time? What's going on here? I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm saying. Are you kidding me? Is it really that one? The same? Is this the head ski diameter is the same as the beater? That's crazy. Wow. Okay. Or unless it's literally yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. And it feels like. I don't know, man. I, if that's metric, then I'll be pissed because this is, this is clearly standard. Yeah, it's a standard. Five sixty fourths to one quarter. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. One quarter to five sixty four. That's a standard measurement. Ah, oh, maybe I'm gonna say it's always gonna say. Well, I don't know what's going on with that. Let me try. This one is that possible? It's too small. I'm too small. I mean, I, I swear, if this, if this pedal is metric, I'll be pissed. <laughs> I'm not opposed to metric measurement. I just, it's just annoying when you. You're doing what the majority of your gear is the standard, and then all of a sudden you come along with something that requires it towards <coughs> metric, and then you know it doesn't, nothing, it's not lined up. I think this might be the case here because I try when it's smaller, it's too small, I try when it's a little larger. It's going up there. That's what's going on here. Yeah, it's like, what? Like, are you kidding me? I gotta get the light on again, guys. I gotta see what's going on here. What is that? Can you tell me? Too small, right? <laughs> Like, there's no way I don't have the right key here. I have every key. When I say one quarter, five sixty fours? Right? Yeah. It's got it. It's one quarter, five sixty fours. I'm telling you right now it is. So, what is it? Is this it? No. Yep, 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 wait. See? It's like, what? Are you serious? And then I try the one that's a little larger, and then what? What happens? You want to take a wild guess? What's going on? It's too damn big. Like that's so BS is what it is. And the same thing's going on with this one. So you know what that means? It means I can't tighten the damn thing. And I'm not gonna risk it because I'm gonna strip the damn thing. So damn. Good thing we're not building a freaking dam here, man. We'd be screwed. As far as I have the right tools, that is. <coughs> this is cracking me up. I'll tell you that much. It's really just cracking me up. Yeah, I don't know what the hell I do. Oh, man. You don't be messing with that. You know what? I think all that actually does is slide <coughs> both the uh, Cham the chain and the cam from left to right anyway, so it's cool. I mean, maybe that's why they make a metric so you don't play with it. Let's let's just try this one for now. Watch this, right? This is gonna this should alter my cam height. See that? See what happened? See? So that, that screws for my my slate pedal. <coughs> Close the meter. Now I have to find the one for this. And I was assuming it was that screw there. So it still probably is. Or is it this? Is this one? That's the pedal, see? It's for the pedal. So you just kinda up. Here we go. All right. This one, I'm telling you right now, by losing that, that's going to alter this pedal. This pedal for sure. See, we definitely have some nice tension for sure, but not a lot of bounce back. And you know, we need that. We need that front. We need that, um, the backlash for hilltail. I mean, this pedal really doesn't have a lot of backlash. It's good. You want, I love it. It's one thing I love backlash, but we want the hilltail technique. We definitely want backlash. So I'm going to say that's about a good, what would you say? 45 degrees? Here we go. We got 180. Okay. There's 180. And then there's 90, right? It's about 90. You want somewhere between 90 and 180, right? Yes. So let's come back and then like right about there, bam. And then let's tighten those up again. Where were we on this side? Try to tighten them. This one. I just I feel like measuring Jurassic Park when you just kind of spin the sign around and get them off in the right direction. 180, <coughs> 90 right angle. <coughs> let's just say right there. Okay? There we go. Tighten it up. I gotta get the air conditioner on. There's no air on. It's 80 degrees in here. You wonder why I'm never wearing shirts. That's why I know. You know what I'm thinking? Why didn't you turn it around? Yeah. That's what I think too. Good point. That looks good. That looks good. Now it looks like we're gonna get smashed on this pedal. What do you think? Now we, yeah. Now we're, all right. Now it's looking more, now I'm feeling more like a pro here. Because I am a damn professional. That's right. All right. So now that we have a professional looking pedal, let's hope that it plays like a professional looking pedal. And there you go. Let's set up the kit. The double bass pedal kit. The kit. Well, yeah, I guess that does complete the job. And we're going to do exactly what the beaters and I are just going to go in there and just, um, I'm going to tighten everything up one more time. Because the last thing you want is your gear to loosen up on you during a gig. You do not want that. You want some grease? For your Chinese food? Just good. You can actually go for some best below me institution. Get you. These spring rolls. Don't lose your nuts. Hold the soy sauce, please. Nice and All right, here we go. Oh, there's our polished bag. Let's get the polish on that thing. We have to do a little polish on this kit at some point. It's getting a little dirty. All right, that looks good. I'm happy with that. I really am. All right, quick test to see if it holds. Yeah, it held. It did. It did get back down. Like Ooh, it's not so serious. Sorry, guys. Right Let's try that again. Let's uh, get everything back to the hexy, you know? 
oh no, yeah, dude, now we're see, like, you can't mess around with any other beater, any wood, wood maybe, but if it's, if it's anything but like, forget about rubber, felt, dry felt, this is, I'm telling you, affects the overall tonality of the bass drum, no matter where the bass drum is. I don't care if it's mahogany or maple or maple mahogany or birch, maple birch, it's maple poplar, would be popular, because it's poplar, it's not gonna sound right unless you have the right beater, depending on the style of music, and not even necessarily style, just what, what, is, what tone are you going for, right? If you're in the freaking hard, heavy rock and jazz, I guess you want that boomer sound. Yeah, I guess the felt beaters are for you, in my opinion. I like that. I like that, um, what do they call it? Flippy, frappy, thrashing, flapping, punchy, heavy hitting, you know, beater. That sounds more like a bass drum, yeah. Not like a heavy goddamn pizza. Pizza box board. Jesus Christmas. I'm excited about recording. All right, let's tighten it up. Yeah, now, now we're on to something here. Now we, can, now we can work on some things. Now we can work on some things. I'm just gonna loosen this up one more time, hold, just support it. Because I, I like I like the angle we're at, and I don't want to lose that angle. Not that I can't find it easily again. It's right about there, and you know, just make sure both your beaters are straight and flush on there. Yeah. Okay. So that one just naturally falls. Did you saw that? You see how the, that that slate fell? I told you that just naturally fell. That's the angle I had it. And once again, what angle? It's 45. Not 180. Not 180. It's 45. That, that's not good. It's right about there. I judge it on the on the cam. On the positive side of the cam, you can use that as a good judge. But how do we get it perfect? I'm going to show you. I'm trying to get it perfect. Near perfect. You got to hold the beaters together like such. Hold them together nice and tight, and then while you're holding them together, if you're closing, then you tighten. Both have to keep. Release. Does that look good now? What happened? You see what happened, right? I altered the y'all the radio. Um, so I'm gonna be yourself. Let's try it again. This time without altering it. Tighten. Tighten. Still no good. Why does that keep happening? Well, I'll tell you why. Because it's in my ass. Let's come up again, come back, and let's try it again. This time let's hold them down here instead, okay? Let's try that, see if it makes a difference. Do you think it will? Yeah, so do I. Any good? Better. This part's not easy, I know. It's, it's tough, but we're doing trial and error. I'm trying to the best way to do it. Let's come back one more time and get it from the bottom here. Not holding on to the beaters. We're just very slight, ever so light pressure on the beater. But, and then kind of, we want to keep them together so we have equal heights. See, still not equal though. It's a pain in my oh. One more time, it's crazy. Bring it back one more time. This is it. This has got to be it. This is the one. This is the one. I'm telling you. This is the one. You got to just kind of play with it, man. You know, it's just, it's, it's what it is. You just have to play with it. So I'm going to do one more time without touching it. Then bring it back and then literally just, I'm not, I'm not even touch it. No, it's just Maybe this one will, please. That's all. Bring it up higher, so at least we won't fall back. It should be even. It's really dry. Let's speed this part up, because obviously we're struggling. There's a lot more than I wanted to do. One more time. Bring it back. Bring it low. Bring it up. Higher than one. Even them out. Okay. I'm bringing the, the, the dominant side up higher, so when it falls back, it hopefully falls even with the other, and that's it. We finally got it. Now, now that we're set, we're gonna we're gonna fix it by tightening. We're gonna tighten it up. We're gonna forget about it, and now we know that those things are solid. Man. And you know what, just to be sure, I'm gonna, we're gonna bring in big boys over here. Should I bring in big boys? Nah, just keep, that's cool. Yeah, we got it, I got crazy. Rock on, Kung Fu Great Might. I don't know what's going on with my right forearms, are bothering me a lot. Lifting weights like a man, man. I took a, to be honest, I took a little break in my fitness regimen for that very reason, because, I, you know, if you work out, if you do, you notice that when you work out and you're weightlifting all the time, it definitely can affect your playing. It makes you feel a little more tense, so it's very important to stay relaxed. So you need a sauna, massage, combination to get your girlfriend, get your rub down. And we're good, man, that looks good. Well, guys. Thank you so very much for checking out the video. Really, I can't thank you enough. Thank you so very much for checking out the video. Um, this was just set on my dream kit. Try love this thing. And I have to complete the job. I finished that off the pedal. It looks great, better than I ever did. That's much better. You guys can see that. Please subscribe, share, and like. Please subscribe, share, and like. Thank you. You don't have to share, but at least subscribe and like. I've got a lot of work in these videos. Enough. I mean, there's like, for what I can do with the tools and gear I have. Man, size balls, and I gotta turn on that AC before I'm gonna get my ass whooped. My girlfriend. Alright, guys. Yeah, thanks for checking us. Stay posted for the next video. Alright. It's hot.